Hey everyone, Mr. Vargas here to help you with your Math 8 homework assignment for tonight. This is coming from page 375, lesson 5.1, and we are talking about lines. So, so far we've gotten a brief introduction to parallel lines and what happens when a transversal crosses those lines. So this homework is actually going to further investigate that information and um, look at some basic problems and applications. All right, number one and two. We have, um, for numbers one and two, we're given this figure right here. So we've got two parallel lines that kind of look like that, and they're being cut by a transversal going right across just like that. Um, they go ahead and label some angles for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's the shape that, or the diagram that they give us. And they ask us to classify each pair of angles as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. In particular, for number one, they want us to check out What's going on with angles 2 and 4? So whenever you see this little symbol right here, that means angle. So angles 2 and angle 4 are, um, looking at those really quickly, we've got 2 and we've got 4. Since they are in the same position, relative to the parallel lines, so we've got a parallel line here, parallel line here. These are in the same position. If you were to think about this as one section of angles and this as the other section of angles, two and four are in the same position, so these are called corresponding. All right, and that's the answer for number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Let me just really quickly redraw my diagram. Apologize, I'm not the best artist. And we've got these angles right here. Okay, so now they want us to f identify what's going on or what's the relationship between angle 4 and angle 5. Once again, if we think of these angles as our first section of angles and these angles right there as our second section, we can kind of begin to compare their relationships uh, we've got 5 and 4. Those are alternating in position. One's on bottom, one's on top. And they fall outside, outside of the parallel lines. So my red parallel lines here, this would be the inside or the interior. And all of this stuff out here would be the exterior. Um, let me erase that just a clear it up a little bit. So that means angles 4 and angle 5 are, we definitely know that they are alternate, and since they fall into the outside of our parallel lines, we call them alternate exterior angles. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number three. Okay, a little bit of a challenge problem. I'm not going to draw the flag. I'm just going to draw the lines that are happening here. So we've got that line, and then we have two parallel lines going this way. And I'll put a little mark to note that they are, in fact, parallel. 
they will not touch each other. Okay, uh, this red line right here would be my transversal. Transversal. I'll highlight over it in blue. Okay, that's my transversal. And the two middle lines are my parallel lines. Let me label the angles that they give us. Okay, so they numbered those angles for us, and then they ask us, uh, and the flag shown at the right, line A is parallel to line B. We've got that. This is A, this is B. And the measure, so this is important information, the measure of angle 1, this little M here, that means measure. So the measure of angle 1 equals 150 degrees. Okay, find the measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 7. Okay, so with that information, we know that angle 1 is 150 degrees. And we can put that right here. And with that, we can pretty much find the angle of, or we can find the measure of every single angle in our picture. Um, corresponding angles, so 1 and 7, are congruent when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So this would also be 150 down here, 150 degrees for 7. Um, vertical angles, or angles opposite each other, like this, so 1 and 3, they are also equal, or congruent. Congruent and equal are synonymous. Uh, they mean the same thing. So that's 150 degrees. Uh, 5 would be 150 degrees. Okay, and then the last part is figuring out these other angles. Uh, and we can actually do that using the fact that angle 1 and angle 4 are supplementary angles, meaning they create a straight line when they are formed together. So angle 1 and angle 4 make a straight line. And here's an important side fact. Straight lines have a measure of 180 degrees. Okay, so since a straight line makes 180 degrees, we know that 1 and 4 are supplementary since they create a straight line. We can deduce that angle 4 is actually going to be 30 degrees. Angle 2 will also be 30 degrees. Once again, creating a straight line. 1 and 2 create a straight line, so we know that they have to add up to 180. Um, and you can fill in the rest of the information as well. 30 and 30. And with that, we pretty much have everything that we need to solve the problem. Angle 4 is right here. That's definitely 30 degrees. Um, and you can say that you knew that by, if they ask you for a justification, you knew that because of supplementary angles. And then angle 7, right here, that's 150 degrees. And the reason that we know that is because corresponding... angles are congruent or they are equal congruent okay so that's our justification apologize for kind of the sloppy writing I tried to fit everything in one space there alright we've got time for one more 
Let's take a look at problem number seven. And then number seven should be able, uh, you should be able to figure out number eight based on number seven. Okay, number seven, we've got these two sets of parallel lines with a transversal. So let me draw that first. I'll do one in red. Once again, I apologize for my artwork here. It's not the best. And then the other one I can do in blue. All right. They also tell us that this is angle one. This is angle two, uh, and we've got three and four. Okay, the parallel lines at the right are cut by a transversal. Find the value of x. Then they give you some important information. Angle one and angle two are corresponding angles. So one and two are corresponding. So that means they actually have to be equal or congruent cons co since corresponding angles are, and this is the congruent C symbol. It has a little equal sign with a squiggly line over it. Not that, that. Equal sign with a little squiggly line, that means congruent. So corresponding angles are congruent. And they tell us that M1 equals 45 degrees and M2 equals X plus 25. Okay. Since the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two have to be equal to each other by the fact that they are corresponding angles and corresponding angles are congruent, we can actually go ahead and set 45 equal to x plus 25 and solve in order to get the value of x. And that simply looks like this. 45 degrees equals x plus 25. Let me make a little bit more space here, sorry. 45 degrees equals x plus 25 degrees. All right, and you guys know how to solve one-step equations. We subtract 25 from both sides. And you find out that x equals 20 degrees. And that's your answer for that. Part A. I'll let you try Part B on your own, um, but another rule is that alternate interior angles are congruent as well. That means they're going to be equal. So you're going to do something very similar. Uh, to what you did with part A. All right, uh, that's enough for today. Bring any questions you have tomorrow, and we'll keep working. Thanks, everyone.